Well, hi, everybody. This is, uh, so my name is Ruth Richardson, and I'm the technical director here at the Alliance Theater. I'm here with Kat Conley. Hello. I am the uh, charge scenic artist for the Alliance Theater, but I was also the set designer for <clears throat> Naked Mole Rat Gets Dressed, the rock experience. <laughs> so hopefully, um, hopefully many of you have gotten the chance to watch that show online because we were able to record it. We were able to put it up. Um, so we wanted to give you just a little bit of the background the lead up to actually building and putting a set on stage, which uh, it's it's a longer process than you might think. And it all starts with our very own Kat Conley and believe it or not, Naked Mole Rats. Yes, believe it or not, Naked Mole Rats. It also <laughs> starts with um, the wonderful book by Mo Willems and uh, the script that Mo Willems actually wrote. Um, we take that script and then working with uh, uh, Leora Morris, the director and all of the other designers, we all get together and talk about the show and talk about what we, how we want to approach it. And then the first thing I do is after that initial conversation is go and do some visual research. So we all have an idea of what we're actually kind of talking about. Now, obviously <clears throat> this show takes place in the tunnel. So I've got some pictures of tunnels to take a look at, see different kind of forms. This is actually some of my initial sketches that I did actually sitting in a meeting with the other designers. Um, you can see there at the top, it says one big bold image. That's what we decided we wanted to go for. Um, the lower one kind of has me drawing over top of things, trying to start getting the, the idea of a long tunnel. Um, the face with the teeth was actually an initial idea for grandpa. Um, obviously we did not go that way uh, because that's kind of a really silly, stupid little idea. But you know what, we went there. So why not, you know, talk about it? After we talked for a while and I did these initial sketches, this is actually some of the sketches of what I ended up kind of coming up with. And um, it shows a, a large portal with some drops. And then the next one, number two there, this is actually going step by step through the show, kind of gives an idea of what we were thinking about going step by step and scene by scene through the show. We don't always get a full scene by scene, especially when it's a, especially when it's a set that's semi-static like this one was. Um, but this was especially useful because of all the, the different looks that 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 Kat and Leora were trying to do. This was also part of the preliminary package that uh, that's when I start getting involved. So as the TD, I get something like this. I start looking at it and saying uh, yay or nay as to whether we can build it in budget and in time, and all of that kind of stuff. So. Yeah, and that gives me an opportunity to go back and change stuff. There's a, a point where, and we did, we actually changed quite a bit on this show. Um, and if there's a point where it's over budget or if um, we change our minds, which, you know, happens, it's a process, um, it gives me an opportunity to go back and rework the design before we uh, shift it forward to finals. Mm. So preliminaries are a pretty good idea of what the set's going to be, but it's not the absolute final design that we actually go with. This is actually the final ground plan and section of Naked Mole Rat Gets Dressed, the rock experience. Um, a ground plan is basically looking from the sky over top of the stage and looking straight down. A section is actually cutting the stage in half and looking at it from the side. So it's just a way of communicating. It's a type of drafting and it's a way of communicating uh, the ideas to the technical staff. Um, I'm old school and I still actually hand draft. I'm learning CAD, but um, it's a process too. Yes, Ruth is very excited about me learning CAD because she has to take what I draw by hand and then translate it into AutoCAD. Which is, this know, is kind of this not is final. This is a final design for me. So stuff like this, like the ground plan, and uh, this is actually called a centerline section, which is a pretty typical thing for a designer to hand in. So um, this, you'll get a lot of different packages from a lot of different designers. Everybody likes to convey information in a different way, but the ground plan and centerline section, these are two things that you will always have, or you always need to have in order to recreate whatever they're, whatever's in their brain. So basically the process between a designer and a TD is taking what's in the designer's brain and getting me to understand it. This is actually some of the, the designer plates, um, it's continuing on draftings of each actual individual element of the set. So um, I need to come up and make sure that uh, I've drawn uh, what I actually see. 
or what I actually want. So um, with notes and measurements, so they get built to the same size. All of the draftings that I produce are actually usually in uh, quarter inch or half inch scale, which means a uh, quarter inch scale is a quarter of an inch equals a foot. So it means I can take a very large object and draw it and it'll fit on a piece of paper. Um, half inch scale is half inch to a foot, same, same, same idea. And that's my drafting table behind me. Is um, that's where I do my work. And designers spend a lot of time, um, like I say, they're trying to convey what's in their brain. So they'll come in different scales, they'll come in different views, including side views, front views, I mean, elevation views, uh, section views, like you've got center line section, and then you've got a section of a piece of scenery that shows a cut through of that piece of scenery. So really it's whatever it takes to convey the design that they want to put on stage. Which brings us to? Brings us to, this is a, this is a color model that I built. Um, this is also what I used as the Charge Scenic Artists of the Alliance. I'm also responsible of painting all the shows that come through the Alliance. So I actually use this as to give my, uh, to give me the idea of what I wanted me to paint the color wise. Um, but we do three dimensional models like this. Uh, it really helps, um, a lot of other designers and other directors aren't actually necessarily good at seeing things in 3D from a flat piece of paper. So this is actually an opportunity for me to really show in scale, this is a quarter inch scale model, to show what the set will look like in real life, just a lot smaller. It's also a really great way for Kat to, uh, to give me an idea of the overall vision and, and to give me an idea of exactly what she wants it to look like when it's on stage so that I can take what I have on paper, what I have in the model and what I have coming out of Kat's brain and meld it all together into some sort of actual, you know, cohesive set that looks like what she wants. Um, the other thing with this, sorry, the other thing with this model is that it will usually end up in the rehearsal room with the actors and with the director. That's exactly where I was going. This is, um, uh, I use this to uh, display the, the uh, the design to the director and the actors, but it also um, gives me an opportunity to walk them through scene by scene. And then actually the director, Leora, took this model for like three weeks and used it to help her with her blocking. So she actually requested enough little tiny scale people to move around to make sure that she was getting the idea of where she wanted to place the actors as she was rehearsing. So it's so a very this, useful thing to have. Indeed. Uh, so this pretty well wraps up uh, a final design. So, you know, you've got the ground plan, you've got center line section, you've got the final version of that. You've got basically elevation plates or plates that will show me the details of the design. If my charged scenic artist were not also the designer, I would typically also demand that they get my charged scenic artist uh, some, some paint elevations, but in this case, I could kind of let that one go. Uh, However, well, also, um, as a charge scenic artist, I have painted from color models before. So it's, exactly. there's a different, there are a couple different ways to give information to the scenic artist what the designer wants. But that's a whole another long conversation that we can have. <laughs> It'll be in the second installment of this incredibly <laughs> long thing. Um, so yeah, it, this completes like the final design. Once we have all of this and we have a good way of understanding like how all this goes together and goes on stage, then it sort of shifts on to the, the build portion of this, which takes it over into my court. Just far more boring, but you know, it's uh, But look it, at all the pretty, the pretty colors. Do. Well, yeah, I mean, seriously, that's the only way that I can keep track of what's what. So this is a screenshot of, of my typical drafting. Uh, I can do all of this laid out in an, uh, basically what's called model space. And it, model space is specific to AutoCAD in particular, and that's what we use here at the Alliance. So this is a computer-aided drafting program. Uh, so I go through with the computer-aided drafting. I first off take uh, Kat's hand draftings and I translate them into a digital version of that. And then from those hand draftings and from those then CAD models that I've created, I then create uh, construction plates that can go out onto the shop floor. Uh, a big part of that is that I need to recreate the ground plan, the elevation view, and the centerline section. So this is the, uh, you know, the, the less pretty but uh, more exacting CAD version of what CAT gave us as a, uh, as a hand drafted piece, as a hand drafted package. Uh, so this lets me get into some really nitty gritty details down to the half inch. Um, in this scale, it's down to the half inch. In construction plates, I don't do anything less than a 16th. Um, so 16th of an inch is my uh, unit of measurement, my, my smallest amount and as close as I can get it in any other drafting. But when it comes to stuff like this, if I'm within a half inch, I'm feeling okay about things. Uh, so that brings me on 
to construction plates. So after I've done a ground plan, after I've done a section, after I've done all of those things so that I know that everything's laying out the way that they're supposed to in the stage space itself, then I get into construction plates. Now this is where we get down to the 16th of an inch. This is where we get down to the absolute nitty gritty details of all of this. Um, and these are just some samples of construction plates that hit the floor. They go out to my carpenters, to my uh, steam shop supervisor, Patrick, and they get built. So following these plates, these things get built. From there, we go on to like load in plates, different things like that. So these are the meat and potatoes of how a set gets built. So once it gets built, we go into the load in phase. Oh, and this is a. Uh, once so it gets take, built, it comes to me, and then I paint it, and then we go into load-in phase. All right, legitimate. I, I always uh -huh. do forget there is, you know, there's painting involved and stuff. I mean, we do the important part, but. Okay. <laughs> nah, Kat's the one that makes it actually look good. So that is a fairly important part of all of this. Uh, so at this point, after I've drafted everything out to within a 16th of an inch, then I am relaying that over top of all of my ground plans and all of my sections, making sure that I am getting everything down to the absolute nitty gritty. Uh, and then we go into load in, you know, once it's painted. So this was during the, the load in phase of all of it. And as you can see, it looks a little rough. Yes, it's uh, a little ragged <laughs> right now. We haven't, and we haven't, uh, all of these portals that we put in, actually, uh, you'll see in the final photos, or if you saw when in the, if you saw the video, um, all these portals are actually light boxes, which means that they light up. So they needed to get, um, we used LED tape, we needed LED tape uh, mounted in them. So that's why they look really ragged right now, because the front facing hadn't been assigned or uh, attached yet. So it, it took a lot of finessing to get it to the actual uh, stage worthy point, which ha can happen a little bit over tech. Uh, Loden in particular, it's really important for us to get everything there for actors to be able to use and for lighting, sound, everybody else to be able to uh, finesse their own things. And so we can work a little bit into the tech process, but the majority of the set needs to be in and done by first day on stage, um, which it was, uh, like I say, a little rough, but it's fun. Uh, so that brings us then to actual production, where it looks glorious, everything looks beautiful. So yeah, everything lit up. Uh, we had a series of steps, we had a series of portals, all of which lit up with, uh, with LED tape. So we're finding that that's a, a pretty normal thing to have a lot of integration between us, between lighting, between projections. Um, yeah. Even sound is working their way deeper and deeper into these sets. So we're finding that we need to accommodate a lot of stuff. Well, we all have to work together. That's what theaters does, so. As I understand it, it's a collaborative art form. Yes, you cannot do theater in a vacuum, so. <laughs> so, well, uh, so yeah, that was a quick walkthrough of, you know, from concept to on stage for Naked Mole Rats, um, which you Naked will get the, chance, the rock experience. The rock experience, which you will get the chance to experience again uh, come this upcoming January. Which is fantastic. Isn't that? I think it's fantastic. So, uh, so that's everything from us, and uh, we hope you enjoyed it, and yeah, we'll... See you next time. Thanks. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.